That you 
Christian Center Church podcast. If you would like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. This morning, I'm going to minister a little while, except you abide in the ship. Now, let me tell you, this has been preached a thousand ways, but I'm here to preach it one way to you this morning and tell you, you're going to have to stay in Jesus no matter what happens. Now, I'm telling you, now, as we go along and as, the, as we see the end coming even closer, there's going to be some going to turn loose. Yes. You know, people, you know, we, we think we're living in difficult times. Let me tell you, beloved, we're li- living in the best of times right now. We're living in the supernatural best of times. We're living in the times if Jesus tarries, people are going to talk about these times that we're in. Amen. But I remember my daddy said we could drive across country. They go, could go anywhere. Said you could go anywhere in the country. Well, they'll raise up a generation never wanted to go across the country. They don't care about the, across the country. No way. They worried about Nickelodeon and, and, and Facebook. Come on. And social media. As long as I got that, I'm good. Well, y'all, y'all two or not, you know. But, but difficult kind times do lie ahead. And we have to prepare ourselves to stand, you know, and we need to get some of that uh, stuff we have, some of that skill set, some of that word development that we had over the past few weeks, months, and years, and we're going to need to exercise it. We're going to need to say something about it. We're going to well, use it. Can somebody say amen? You know, and it's a hard truth and, and often unwanted, but Scripture foretells that in the end time that it's going to be bad times. It's going to be hard. It's going to, let me tell you, people are going to leave. People are going to move away from God. People are going to, you know, people are going to think doing good's doing bad, and being bad's doing good, they think. You know, we're living in the day. It's coming. And, and we, we have a, a the be, you know, we live in the best of the world. Brother Albert Ray would call it the best of the worst. The worst of the best of the worst, I think is how he would say that. Best of the worst. He said, we live in the best of the worst. He's talking about worst inside the country. Amen. But you know, if, if we really push in and, and hold on and, and understand how blessed we are today, you know, every person under the sound of my voice, anybody that is living in the, the, the bottom 5% of America, is richer than 68% of the world. Oh, I didn't have it. I didn't get it. My house ain't like that. Well, you don't need to. Well, look, quit comparing your house to their house and compare your house to a ditch. Come on, now get a little more fun. Get a little more. Now make it mean something to you. Make it mean something to you. I don't know how you, how you do that. But, but, but before we get all sad, before we, we get all bent out of shape, we need to understand that, that we are richer than 68% of the world. If you're in the bottom five, if you're at the bottom five, I'm talking about in the bottom five, not the top five in America. I'm talking about the top, the bottom flipped over being in the top. We're super blessed. How many of y'all know we're blessed? I mean, but yes, because God, come on. He's done something for us, amen. But Timothy said in the last days, they'll depart from the faith. And you know what they'll look for? They'll go with seducing spirits and demons and, and doctrines. You know what people want to hear? People want to hear what they can keep doing and stay in the Christ. Oh, you, but, well, he died for that. He did that, but well, let's, not play, let's not play with him. Let's be mature. Let's go on and do what God has called us to do. Amen. Come on. I mean, I got enough going on. Come on. <laughs> but, you know, it, 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 the action Amplified said, paying attention instead to deceitfulness and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons. People want, people want that. Because it appeads to them and, and, and way it is, you know. You, you know, I mean, you know that when you're disrespected to your parents, amen, you're just teaching your coming on children how to be disrespectful to you. 
You know, and how you teach your children is going to be how they teach you when you get old, treat you when you get old. I said, let me say that again. The way you treat your kids now is how they're going to treat you when you get old. Well, that's all they know. This is the mannerism of it. This is what they've been taught by the Father. This is how they've been taught. Y'all listening to me? <laughs> so we ought to give them the word. We ought to tell them who, who Jesus is. You, you know, uh, Brother Michael was looking at a video with Brother Willis, and he talking about God calling up older saints and bringing them back and rehiring them, amen, to do things for God. And I, and I actually see him doing those things. And, and I believe there's a restoration of the folks that's been in Christ that we might lead the way for those that are coming. Whether they're your kids, your greats, or your grands, you can lead the way by living for Christ. Can you say amen? You know, you don't need to, to uh, get, get a book after them all the time. What you need to do is walk steady, walk in the Word, and be faithful to whom you serve. Can somebody say amen? You know, say, uh, Luke 2 said to stay awake. He said in, at all times, he said, praying that you may have strength to escape the things that are coming or that are going to take place upon the earth and stand before the Son of Man. You know what he wants you to do is to be ready. Hey, now, he said, now, now there's things going to happen, you know. The Bible says as men want to cover themselves up for what's coming upon them. Not what happened, just what's, what's coming. What's, not what's got here, but what's coming. People, people commit suicide. People try to get away from it. We live in a day now that, that people don't want to face their own problems, and they want somebody else to fix them. Well, you can't continue to do what I was doing and expect I'm going to have change, you know. And, 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 but wherever it is today, you're going to have to abide in Jesus. Who, who knows that in Matthew 24, 24, 37, 38, maybe 39. He says, it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. For the days before the flood, the people were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew it not about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away you know what it did people just do unconcernedly what they want to do i think we live in a world where people unconcernedly are doing whatever they want to without repercussion they think it's that we heard that it's not really that big a deal very much like today but what we have to do is concern ourselves with the gospel and things to change you know faith is the only way through christ jesus let me tell you he is the boat we're gonna get on can you say amen the ark of christ is the one that we should offer our kids and the same as what's going on can you imagine in the day of no no it said every thought that they could imagine was wicked how to get something deep? They just get a wicked thought about it. How to treat people? Just get a wicked thought about it. How to have gain? Just wicked thought. About it. Y'all listening? We live in the same world today. Let me tell you, never lay down for somebody. Let me tell you, never lay down to, to where somebody can walk on you. Let me tell you, in the end, you'll just be too humpy, too lumpy, too too cushy. Something will be wrong even if you lay down for people. What you got to do is stand up for who you are in Christ Jesus and stand on that word. And Jesus can get me through. I'm no matter what's going on. Amen. Amen. You know, it's a funny thing about that. You know, people, as long as you're serving people, people are happy. What we need to do is serve the Lord. We're right, Brother Jose. You're right. We, we need to be conscious of him. We need to find out what he wants, can you say? Let me tell you what. You know what a lot of Christians do? They put a lot of other things in people and make them their priority, and you're not even second fiddle to them. Jesus will never put you second fiddle. You put him first, and gee, you'll always be first on the list, can you say? He'll be just right where you put him, amen. Some people want to be first, but they don't want Jesus, amen. They don't. Come on. But, you know, we got to hold on, and, and everyone can make the trip. Everybody can do it. Now, let me tell you this. Look at me real quick, and I'm going. You know that, that in the ark that we're trying to talk about this morning, you know that in that boat we don't want you to jump out of, in that boat that, that won't sink if Jesus is the captain, can you say amen? <laughs> let me tell you, you can go back to the ark, and you'll find out that nobody ever fell out of the ark. Nobody fell headlong out of that ark. Not, not one animal fell out of that ark. Can you say amen? He's able to keep that which we surrender to him. Amen. But we're going to have to. You know, the psalmist said many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver them out of them all. Now, he said it is problem. It is things. He said, but the good news is that the Lord delivered them out. You know, Jesus said, I told you before, he said, in this world, you'll have tribulation, but no, I've overcome the world. And he said, I, I tell you, right there, it's bad, but you're going to have to be in me. 
You're going to have to be in the Christ. And, you know, except we do that. You know, it's an amazing thing that, that the devil wants you to, to, to have all kind of distractions. and wants you to get bitter and wants want you to get distracted with people. Let me tell you. You want me to tell you what bitterness is? Bitterness is taking poison, hoping your neighbor or hoping your enemy will die. That's all poison is. You, when people have bitterness, it, it's just like taking poison and hoping your enemy going to die from you taking the poison. Well, that's what it is. That's what it is. You know, you know, let me tell you, most people don't care if you're better, and, and most people don't care how you feel. Most people don't care where you're going. But I'm telling you, Jesus cares every day about you, where you're going, how you feel, who you are, what your day is. Some people get in that nobody cares for me. Man, I told the man that died for you, just his arms out and just died for you. Man, that's the dude I'm talking about. Oh, but some other people, they're more important now. Come on. Now, I'm going to be the first to tell you, this thing may not feel like the love boat. <laughs> and I'm telling you, we might be missing the plane. <laughs> the plane, we might be missing that. <laughs> And sometimes it, it gets rough, and sometimes you're going to have to put your life preserver on. It's called the Word of God. You're going to have to put it on, come on, and hold on and see what God's going to do. Now, in the last days, you know, as we receive the, the leadership, as we receive what God wants in our life, a lot of people don't have that. But, but let me tell you, if we receive what he it's going to cause us to abide in the ship. It's going to cause us to have direction with him. Isn't it amazing? Now, can you imagine the day of Noah? I'm going to get excited about preaching today. Though. Let me tell you what. That, that, can you just imagine? They went there for a hundred years, and the door was open. Oh, my goodness. One day, the door was shut. He said, Papa, you ever seen that door? He said, no. He said, Great, Papa, you ever seen that? Papa, the fit, you ever seen? No, I had never seen that door shut. But that door was shut. Let me tell you, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that we need to be trying to load them up. Today is the day that we need to tell our, our neighbor about Jesus. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth again. This gospel thing, being born again and moving with the saints, let me tell you, it's kind of it's like a, 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 in an airplane. Amen. Now, you know, when you get in an airplane, before you get in the plane, sometimes you have schedules change, things happen, gates close, things are different. And then when you get in the air, you have turbulence. And when you get in the air, sometimes they, they tell you, to, you better put your seatbelt on and don't be walking around in the plane. I mean, come on. But let me tell you, it's kind of like that with Jesus. But let me tell you, the landing is eternally good. The landing in heaven is going to be all right. Can you say amen? But you're going to have to stay the flight. You're going to have to stay the course. You're going to have to stay in what he says. Now, go with me to, to Acts 27. I'm finally getting here. And let us look at the apostle Paul and just one more of his mind-blowing things that he went through. You know, Paul went through a lot of things. And my note in this is captain, captive made captain. Very few, very few letters and different in the spelling thereof. But you know, he's a captive and he becomes captain of his ship. Let me tell you what, we get direction and find out what God wants for us. Can you say amen? Now, now, now let me, let, I don't know who it was we was talking this morning, but you know, it's not ever going to be convenient for you to have problems. It's never going to be convenient for you to have a storm in your life. It's never going to be convenient for bad things to happen. Now, now, if you tell me when they are convenient, we'd get with me after church because it ain't in my notes. But there's no convenient time to go through stuff. But there are convenient times to get hold of the Word. There are convenient times to receive what He said. There are convenient times... Whenever now, you don't know when you're going to need it. Acts 27, 9, and Paul's getting ready to go. He's trying to get him to stop, make his trip. I mean, you know, sometimes you can't tell people anything, and I'm one of them sometimes. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, give herself a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> and Willis's need to be clapping hard. Uh, <laughs> now, first, he said, now when much time is spent, when sailing was now dangerous because of the, uh, the fast was now already passed. Paul's talking like if we'd made it before the fast, trying to tell you where the time is in, the historical where we're at. And Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, 
I perceived that this voyage would be of hurt and much damage, not only to the landing of the ship, but also our lives. Now, the word perceived means he, he discerned. It actually means that Paul's a spectator. You know, sometimes you just need to step back and see what's going on. Some, sometimes you need a different perspective than what other people have. And Paul perceived, and, and he said, it's now dangerous. How I many of y'all know that, that 11th verse, he said, and the centurions believed the master, the owner of the ship, more than the things which were spoken by Paul. Now, let me tell you, now, now, now danger is a bad thing right here. It, it's no good time for a storm, but Paul's trying to tell them something. He, yeah, he's trying to move, and, and, and there's a moving by the Holy Spirit. There's moving good sense with the apostle Paul. And he said, well, not make us move. But let me tell you, church folk, sometimes there's things out out of our control. There's some things we have to keep moving. That, that there's some things that, that this, this is the vehicle to get us over there where we're going. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Let me tell you, if you walk far enough, let me tell you, you'll ride in the back end of a Ford truck if you walk far enough. I don't care if your dues messed up when you get there. Amen. You don't buy it. But what gets you there? He said, nevertheless, the centurions, they, they didn't believe that. They didn't believe Paul. And Paul thought it out, and he was telling them where it was at. You know, and Paul was in this ship. Let me tell you, there's some more ships we got to put up. You know what? I'm talking about true friendships, acquaintanceships, married partnerships, church memberships, <laughs> and our ambassadorship to the world. Amen. And all these things, if you're not careful, the devil wants to sink them. But I'm going to tell you, don't jump ship, stay in the word, stay with who he is, stay with who the Christ is. And it's not ideal that the circumstances are not great. If I had my choice, I wouldn't do it this way. But how many of y'all know God's greater than the choices that men make us have? How many of you know God's greater than what's going on? Amen. Now, now, you know, it, it's a storm is it, it, about to get here. It's something uh, fixing to happen. You know, let, you storm, now storm, look at me real quick. Storms do not come in your life because you're out of the will of God. No more than storms come in your life because you are in the will of God. Storms come into your life because they are the will of God. Ooh. Well. We don't like it, don't feel good. What about what that them cats got ready? Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Go to the other side. They about to sink, baby. They about to sink. And the first thing they thought about it is that Jesus didn't care. You know what the devil wants you to think when you're in the storm and your boat's about to sink is that Jesus doesn't care. Amen. He does care. Amen. What good sense would it be to him to drown in the boat with us? It don't make any sense. Don't that make any sense to us. You know, when it comes to storms, you, you got to do like it is. You know, you got to hold on to it and believe God is going to happen. This God's in control. Amen. You know, what we got to do is use a little, a little southern Louisiana sense. You know what we do whenever the storms come? We prepare. We get ready to go. You go buy sheets of plywood you ain't never going to put up. You go get stuff you won't do. Come on. You go get all that stuff and you ready for the storm. But the Bible people tell you about a storm, say, so, oh, Brother Jerry, now. <laughs> now, you, Brother Jerry, you're just a little much now. <laughs> yeah, I am a little much. Hey, Amen. Ask them up on my end. 18 verse. Jump down to 18. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the church said, lighten the ship. <laughs> You know, they lighten the ship. You know, things that seem to be real important yesterday are not important today. I want to let you know that storms come by to show us we got weights in the boat, can you say? But storms come by to show us that there's some things that we can get by with or without, rather. That's something that we can get and lighten the load. You know, today, modern, if, if I tell somebody to lighten up, it's like it's kind of like, like, girl, you just need to lighten up. Like, like it ain't bad that bad. No, I'm telling you, you need to lighten up and it's bad. Amen. Let, let me tell you about people who are crazy. You ever notice that? <laughs> and I are one. <laughs> I had no problems. People would steal. I worked on pipeline. People would steal. They still, well, you know what? They, we stole. Let me say that again. We stole. Oh, pipe. I was taught, man. These grown men taught me how. They, they did it. They said, they don't matter. They get played. They, whatever. No, they had a reason behind it. And this guy was about this tall, and he stole 20 foot of chain, and he wrapped it around him, and we're on a lay barge. Now, all you got to do is fall in the water. 
You know, he risked his life for, for what, I guess, a $40 chain then. I don't know how much it'd be, 140 a day. I don't know. I don't really know. But, 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 you know, he risked his life for something that he thought was important. He risked his life for something that he thought had value. And, you know, and if he slipped off at the dock, he, the boat would have turned over, whatever. You know, he, he, nobody can unwrap a chain. Hey, come on. Now, isn't it, isn't it amazing? It's a true thing that people are weighted with things that they think they need. Let me tell you. And they lighten the ship. They, they begin to throw stuff out. They begin to, to get rid of stuff. Isn't it amazing that yesterday's importance became today's unneeded weight? Oh, my goodness, church, if we could just get there. If we could just begin to see that, that some of this stuff is, is holding us from going where we need to go. If we would just unload it, the, 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 the waves, the water wouldn't be so close to the edge. If we'd lighten up. You know, it's going to have to take a plan to lighten the ship. You know, everybody's uh, need in their uh, ship to lighten it is personal and their own. And, and, and just what we can do this, either we're going to lighten the ship or we're going to sit in fear and just talk about how bad it is. Let me tell you, we got to stay in the ship and do what's in our control. I can come to the place, you know, it's, I can't help it that we, we're making this trip. I didn't want to make this trip. I, there's no other way. Paul needs to go on to Caesar. He, he's needs to, he needs to make this trip. And let me tell you, some things you may not have a choice in, but there's some things that you do have a choice in. And what is in your control in the midst of the things you think you have none, that they begin to lighten it. They began to lighten that load, and they began to lighten that load, and their chances to survive and became better. I'm telling you this morning, you know. Third verse, and the third day we cast our own hands to the tackling of the ship. Let me look at me. If we will really be involved in what God wants to have in our life, this is what Paul said. The third day they became sailors. The third day, they became men that, that killed the sea. The third day, they were the people that put their own hands to the tackle. Let me tell you what, when you do this and start staying in this boat, start going and knowing we're going to the other side, when you get in here to know that he's with us, let me tell you, nothing can stop you, and we know that it's for our better. Come on. Amen. And we'll <laughs> soon find out ourselves that, the things that, that we thought we could not do, we can do. Sometimes, you know, difficulties show you what you can do. A little stress makes me get up and move. Can you say amen? You know, I get out, man, it's going to rain in two days and grass is that high. I think I'm going to go mow. <laughs> well, that's about that time. <laughs> to me, when it's mowing, if it's that high, it's that high. It's the same high to me. <laughs> got to go cut it. I, I got out and cut a little bit yesterday in between the rain. It didn't rain so much on us, rain. And my, it just, grass just cut so good. I told Sister Wendy, I said, I believe the grass was mushy. <laughs> I don't think it had any water so long that, that it, was just, it was just soft, ready to go, you know. You know. But you know what, what the deal is? No, no matter what it was, no matter what is going on, you got skill set inside you. You have the abilities inside you. And it may take you to the second, third day to find out that you need to put your own hands to it. And what would the rigging, would, what, how would they know? How would they know what to do? Well, somebody, maybe a, a captive, became captain and began to tell them ropes to pull and things to do. You don't have to be real experienced at it. All you have to do is take orders. Can somebody, you know, what I'm talking about this morning. People are really good at doing nothing. How many of y'all know that? <laughs> Woo. I said people are really good at doing nothing. Yeah, I tell somebody, I say, I'll call them, you know, very seldom. If I call you, you're probably like one of the five people I call in the world. <laughs> and I call you and ask you what you're doing, and they say nothing. I'm about ready to hang up because they're doing something. I'm going to go ahead and hang up. <laughs> But you know what, what it, it really, it's good now is that, that we know the next day that's going to be okay, amen. Do what you can today, and the next day's going to be okay. 21st, and with neither stars, excuse me, with neither sun nor stars in many days it appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, and all hope that we should be saved was taken away. And the church said, taken away. Whew. I don't know about y'all. Can, can you just imagine that, that, that the, the cloud cover was so great? The, the cloud cover was so great that it blocked out all natural light. It blocked out the stars. It blocked out the sun. It blocked out all natural ways of navigation. 
Man, I tell you, sometimes God takes your navigation away that you might take on to his navigation. Can you say amen? I've had people say this. They say, that, that, that say well, Brother Jerry said, uh, I want to get you to pray. I said, okay, that's what we do. And they'll say, well, have we done, done about everything else? Well, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't waste my time on the other 20 things. <laughs> yeah, how I many y'all know sometimes prayer is the last thing we do? Now, they've lightened the ship. They throwed, that, throwed stuff out. They, they, they got involved where they didn't even think they could do. That they did. So let me tell you what, in this end time, you're going to be able to do whatever it takes to get us to the other side. Can you see me? Just do what's in your control and don't worry about the stuff that's not in your control. And, you know, just like us, it, it had to have been kind of, it had to have been terribly scary. You know, I fished a little bit at night, and I probably fished too much by myself at night. And they meant to call myself a wise man, but I fished at night by myself. And sometimes when you get out in the dark and no light, the light goes out. By the time you, you get ready, your cue beams out or your headlight goes out, and you go and you dark. And then when you drift, you have that time that you drift in the ship, in the, ship the boat. I'm saying a ship. It was a boat. <laughs> and it moves around, and I'm looking somewhere else. And the boat's kind of getting away, so I tie real quick, and I get ready. And I, get, I put my lights out to get the fish, and after a while, I'm not even looking the right way I'm supposed to be fishing. <laughs> you know, some things get out of your control, can you say amen? And darkness, it gets out, and, and I couldn't navigate in the dark. And, and I would just be like, if I could just pull a light. And you know how old I am. Y'all switching them. I'm pulling them. I mean, the difference. And in that darkness, you lose your way. And in that current, you lose your way. And it all looks the same. And they were at this place that neither stars, neither sun, nothing was shining. Can, can you imagine? I know it had to have been scary. It had to be been scary that all they navigated by in life, all that they navigated as being sailors, as, as sailors, uh, shipmen, it was gone. But they had somebody on there. His name was the Apostle Paul. And there's one in, who, in there who believed Jesus. It's one that said, man, you ought to listen to me. You ought not do this. But let me tell you what the enemy means for bad, God turns for good. Can you say amen? I believe that. Amen. Must, must have been scared. But you know, the, the thing is, God's always given plans. The question is, have we followed it? 21st verse. He said, but after a long absence, now we're talking about now, no stars. We're talking, now we're talking about now, now many days. Now, it's not talking a couple of days. He's not talking 15, 20 minutes. He's talking about that many days. And after a long absence, not instant. You know, church folks, when they get in storms, they like instant. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Amen. You know, when they get the storm up our way, we do buy instant grits. <laughs> we buy instant this and we buy instant that. Amen. We, we, we put stuff with the least, least bit of trouble. Come on. We like instant. <laughs> but sometimes we're getting directions from God is not instant. But they are obtainable. And Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and have gained this loss and harm, uh, this harm and loss. He said, Now I exhort you to be a good cheer, for there shall be no loss of a man's life among you but the ships. Now, it got to be good. Now, that's good news. Now, I tell you, finally, we're getting some good news. Days we've been going up and down. <laughs> There's been no no light for days, you know, and probably everybody's uh, seasick from both ends. How I many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> they got the corona or something on board, I'm sure by now. <laughs> the corona. I mean, you imagine how that killed beer, beer sales, I mean, corona. <laughs> Good, he says. <laughs> you know what Paul did? Now, you know what Paul did? Paul got away from all the complaining. Paul moved away from all the fearful voices. Paul moved away from all the people that, that, that were seasick. Can't you do? We are. Ah! <laughs> Somebody get ready a little direction. So maybe we ah! <laughs> Now me, don't send me to clean up puke. You're going to have to clean up twice as much. Don't send me. If you want more to do, send me. I'll try to oblige you. <laughs> but after a, a, a while, after some time, after somebody seeking somebody, 
23rd verse, and there stood, and there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord whose I am and whom I serve. Amen. Boy, this just got good to me. <laughs> There's been some intervention, can you say amen? Saying, fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought forth to Caesar. That don't seem like good news. <laughs> and lo, God has given thee all that sail with it. Let me tell you, Paul wasn't first in this thing. Those that sailed with Paul were first, not Paul. Now, he still have to go meet Caesar. He's still going to have to go down and look to be executed, go down and be beaten, whatever, whatever's on their mind, whatever they, he don't know, but God's saving him to get before Caesar. Amen. See, God's plan for us is bigger than we know. God's plan for us is bigger than what's going on in the ship. God's plan for us is bigger than what, what sailed us over to this side. Can you say amen? amen. Wherefore, sirs, be a good cheer, for I believe God. And it shall be even as I was told. Do you believe in the midst of your storm? Do you believe that it's going to be like you were told? We're going to have to get to that place. We have to do it. Thank God he gives us exercises. Thank God he lets us run these things happen before we get the big things. How I many you know what I'm talking about? You know, it's too late for a CPR case. Uh, 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 what is that? Yeah, class. <laughs> when, when the time comes to need one. Hold on, Mr. Ben, I'm going, I'll be back. <laughs> I remember when AIDS got bad, I was thinking maybe we would need to go. Because <laughs> we were scared. I know not, it's true, man. I remember mean, when the COVID was so bad, you run from people. people when people were coughing, you go. I'd be, in there, I'd be in there, they cough, and that sister wanted to with me. She's slow, you know, she's with me. I said, come on. She said, what? I said, come on, let's get out of this house. She said, I said, they're coughing back there. Come on. She said, who's coughing? I said, come on, it don't matter. Come on. <laughs> don't matter who's coughing. <laughs> We're scared of stuff. You know, do you believe what God said? Did, or we can walk in fear and believe that God has been there 26 verses. How be, it, how be it we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the but when they, 14th night, now you know they've been on this a long time. This has been going on many nights now. Now this is just the 14th night. Now, now I'm not clear if this is after the many days, counting the many days, or after the time they couldn't in and they finally got an idea of day and night or whatever the deal was. Now it's 14 days. How many of y'all know it's 14 nights? You know that, that 14 is the number of deliverance. Now we can see something up in here now. 14 is the, the number of deliverance. He said, it was come and it were driven up and down in the Mediterranean Sea. But uh, at about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. Somebody said some country. But Paul said we had to be on a certain island. You know, sometimes what, what looks like the, another option is not always the option that God wants us to have. Well, 28. And they sounded and found it to be 20 fathoms. You know what You know what 20 is? 20 is redemption. Now, we're getting in there. We're getting close to the redemption. We, we're getting some things fixing to happen. The things are fixing to change. And when they'd gone a little further, they sounded again and found it 15. You know what 15 is? 15 is rest. We're getting close. We're moving in. We, got, we don't have the victory, but we got some rest. We, we can see where we are. We see that we're moving forward. Let me tell you, it may look scary, but we're still moving toward the, the rescue of the whole boat. Can you say amen? amen. He said, I believe what God said. He gave me everybody on board. He gave me everybody. Isn't that good? You, you know what we need to do is just stay in place. Stay where we should be. Amen. You know, and 29, he said, then fearing, lest we should fall upon rocks, they cast out anchors from the stern and wish for day. 31st, and the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, and we were gone down to the boat and to the sea under colors, meaning they were being deceptive. They were, uh, they were pretending under colors, though they would cast out anchors out of the foreship. And Paul said to the centurion and to the soldier, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. You can get ready and sneak out if you want to. You can get out. You can get out any time. But thank God somebody cares. And you know what they thought? They thought they would get in that ship and they would get. That never made sense to me why somebody want to get out of a ship and get in a boat. Man, this, if my ship, that baby's going to be sinking when I get off of it. It's not going to be leaking. It's going to be sinking. It's not going to have a drip in it. It's going to be that water over the deck if I'm getting out of my boat. 
my ship. I'm, I'm, I'm staying with it. And he told them that they're about to flee out. They're about to get. Let me tell you, if you're going through some rough times and you haven't seen a move of God yet and it's a little bit scary, I want you to tell you to hold on. It's going to be out because God has a specific place for us to land and we're all going to be fine. Can you say amen? Everybody in the boat's going to be fine. Everybody in the ship. Paul said, accept you about it. If you don't abide, I can't guarantee you safety. You know, Amplified says uh, the centurion, the Sir, he said, unleash these men, remain on the ship. They cannot be saved. You know, the angel of God said that God had given them all. You know, we're going to have to take a faith stage stand and take the direction of God. It takes faith to take the direction of God. And then the soldier, 2032, and the soldier cut off the ropes in the boat and let her fall off. Let me tell you what that one wise thing they did. They cut away false hope. Now, if you're trying to get out here any other way, you need to cut that off. You think you're going to be good? You need to cut that off. You, you, you think that, that doing it the way you do it and, and, and debiting out what God's words is, you need to cut that off as false. You're going under false colors. Amen. Yes. That baby would have to have a big, that baby would have to be, have a big Johnson on the back of it. Hey, man, I'm telling you, not be it to the bank. <laughs> It'd take more than a set of oars to get me off this ship. <laughs> But people fail to stay in place, and, and God has called, you know, storms not because uh, he hates us, not because, but God allows storms to control, uh, God allows storms to come not to control us, but us to control ourselves in the storm. See, some people want to get out in the storm now, I get that. I remember when I was a kid and wanted to get out and it was hailing, all right? <laughs> I whip my kids for getting out in the hell now. Come on, get, do, that's something hit you. Your head is not as hard as mine was when I was a kid. You come on in this house before you get hurt, amen. <laughs> 33. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them to take meat and food and saying, this day is the 14th day that, that they have and they've tarried, continued fasting and having nothing. Wherefore, I pray that you take some meat. This is for your health. And there shall not a hair fall from your head. Look at that. You know about Jesus keeping up with them hairs on your head? You know about the souls that Jesus keep? And thus when he spoke me to give, he gave thanks in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, they give thanks. That I remember Jesus. And when they were all a good cheer, they took some meat. And we're all in the ship about 203 score and 16 souls or 276 souls. And when they had eaten enough and had lightened the ship, and the church said, lighten the ship. Still lightening that ship, still getting those stuff. You know, that's the way church folks do. They get about halfway through it, and now we start wanting to keep stuff. My man. I know people, if you're going to throw something away, you got to catch them gone, you know. I know. <laughs> you know, when, when you were raised hard, you think you need to hold on to things that are really not great. But I'm going to tell you, when I was a kid, they held on to things. I remember when I was a kid, kids would nowadays get on social media and go, and I don't even know if they go to their grandparents anymore. I don't even know if they do that. But you know what I, they did when we was kids? They gave you, they had a gallon can of bent nails. And they had you to go straighten them bent nails. That's what you could do is go straighten them bent nails. It was no place to just be idle. Come on, somebody. You know what, what we have to do is, is follow directions and, and know that God has something for us greater than who we are. You know, and the word tells us that, that there was a certain place. And when they got ready to come in and get ready to go into the depth, they had to go. And Paul and them off the ship, but the centurions wanted to kill Paul. But the other centurions stopped him from killing Paul. Now, can you imagine Paul saved the centurion that the centurion might be able to save Paul? See, God's working in what you can't see. How many of y'all believe that God is working where you can't see? Get Jump down to the 43rd verse. But the centurions willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim to catch themselves first into the sea and go into the land. And the rest on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so that it came to pass that they escaped all safe to the land. Let me tell you, it looked like some things might be coming apart in your life. It might be some things that, that are not ideal. But if you hold on till God tells you to move, if you hold on to the time to go, can you say amen? 
You know, sometimes we, we jump out too quick. I want you to stand with me this morning. And I want to tell you that, that there's two kinds of storms in your life. You know what the main storm, one of the main storms is? It's the storm of correction. You remember the apostle, you, excuse me, you remember, you remember uh, Jonah. He went into the sea and was swallowed up. Let me tell you, that, that, that storm was, was a storm of correction. How I many you know that man got people saved? How I many you know that man turned a nation? And storm two is to perfect your life and cause you to grow. It tells us that we don't have to jump ship. It tells us that we can stay within the Father. It tells us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Stay in. You know, and, if, and except we, we stay in the ship, we can't be saved. There's no convenient times for storms. There's, that, there's just no way that, that a storm comes doesn't mean God's mad at you. Just because something happened. Come on. But what we need to do is find out what, what he has said about us and, and, and let us hold on to what God said. Today is your day. Today's your day. <laughs> you, you know, you're, you're, older, you're, you're, you're old as you've ever been right now. The oldest you've ever been. You know what the good news about that? You're the youngest you'll ever be again. Now, you're older you ever been. You're the oldest today. But you're also the youngest today. And write some things. And know that, that sometimes stuff gets in the ship. Sometimes, sometimes water gets over in. Sometimes life is a little chaotic. But in the time that I'm waiting on that place, and that time that, that I know that I have to be at a certain place, that, that God has, there's some things that I can do, and I'm going to lighten my ship. Sometimes them relationships I'm talking about, you've got to lighten some of them relationships. Mm, I didn't get much on that. But I wasn't talking about getting rid of good folks, loving folks. I'm talking about folks that are not loving, not good, and take you down. I'm not... Somebody once said, never set yourself on fire to warm somebody else. <laughs> well, Paul taught it kind. He said, though we give our body to be burned and we have not love one for another. See, so you can do that. You, you can give yourself to people and, man, you can set yourself on fire. You can lay down, let people walk on you, and they'll just think you're too bumpy or humpy. Well, come on. Do all those things. And you, you can't judge your life by by what people say and by what people do. Let me ask you this question. I'm going on. God's been dealing with me. People worry about what other people think. Let me tell you, why do you worry about what people think and you wouldn't take their advice anyway? Excuse me. I'm <laughs> going back over here to end my business. This is my business this morning. Amen. Give God glory. Amen. You see, some of the turmoil in people's ships this morning is relationships, partnerships. And we ought to be working on our ambassadorship. If I'm going to do what you tell me. I don't know how you're going to get across and look like this thing's going to sink. But he said, we're all going to make it. Not going to lose anybody. Not a hair from their head. And that's good news for some of us, amen. This evening, I want to tell you, it's going to be all right. I want to tell you that you can hold on. The only way to be saved is to continue in, to stay in that ark, stay in the Christ, stay in the work that he's done this morning. Father, we just come to you and thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you this very, very morning, Lord God, that you're possible. All things are possible. And that not only that they're possible, you're willing to bring them to pass. Today, Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you this very morning that you're still in the business of saving souls. You're still in the business of healing, delivering, setting people free. And Father, you're still in the business giving that direction where our ships won't sink. And we thank you, Father God, for the note when to move, Lord, when to go, when if we just have a peace and move forward. We thank you, Father God, for direction, correction. We thank you for the word. And we know, Father God, through evidence of Scripture that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And the people said, Amen. Give me my big hand clap of applause.